Uh, first up, we have Glenn Clark from Traverse Hotham. Uh, Cross-country skiing is one of the most prevalent disciplines of backcountry travel. Glenn runs Traverse Hotham, which provides cross-country skiing lessons and cross-country and snowshoe tours across Mount Hotham and Ginner Plains. Glenn came to cross-country skiing through a recreational touring club environment and fell in love with the versatility of cross-country skiing. He enjoys exploring the terrain around Hotham and Dinner Plain and flips winters, pandemics permitting, between Traverse Hotham and Nozawa Onsen in Nagano, Japan. Please give Glenn your attention and I'll swap over to you, Glenn. Great, thanks very much, Dan. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, coming to you uh, from Hotham right now, um, although you can't see it, because if I had the curtains open, it'd be way too bright behind me. There is snow still out there. Not a hell of a lot though. So uh, for you folks in Melbourne and that, you're not miss missing that much, to be honest. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm gonna talk a uh, pretty basic stuff to start with, um, mostly aimed at people who've not necessarily done any cross country skiing before, um, or if you're and or new to um, you know, back country interest. Um, I suppose um, let's start with just a few of, um, let me just get this slide up. Uh, here we go, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, look, I want to uh, start by talking about some of the key differences from um, other forms of uh, skiing and um, the key features of cross country. Now, I suppose um, just a couple of definitions to start with. And um, one, um, I'm going to use the terms Nordic and cross country pretty inter interchangeably uh, today. And that's, well, the origins of cross country skiing are, of course, Nordic Europe. Um, and really as a means of getting around in snowy places. Um, alpine skiing is a relatively modern, uh, a modern invention um, that is waiting across two planks and hurtling downhill. Um, cross country needs to, uh, you need to get over all sorts of terrain and you haven't always necessarily got gravity on your side. Um, but some of the key differences we'll talk about um, and we'll just, one moment, let me get to the right screen here. Change this slide, here we go. Some of you may have seen, uh, you know, this is a pretty traditional looking, I suppose, uh, cross country trail. It is in fact at um, Dinner Plain, this one. And, um, you know, uh, I suppose the image of cross country skiing for many people is, you know, groom trails like that and uh, zipping around, touring around. Um, the definition I think, that I would say, for, you know, backcountry versus, say, groomed cross-country trails, I would say pretty much the moment you leave a groomed cross-country trail, you're in the backcountry. Um, there's no lifts, there's no, um, you know, marked or, or packed down trail. And, um, and I think, yeah, uh, let's just uh, start with um, talking about alpine skiing. You're generally waiting across both skis. Um, most of the time you're... Um, when you're going downhill, depending on your um, style of skiing or the terrain, um, you're pretty much always going to be um, skiing 50-50, 60-40, whatever, 70-30. With cross-country skiing, yes, we do emulate those uh, same, you know, um, uh, stances, if you wish, or downhill techniques to a, to a degree. But moreover, cross-country or Nordic skiing is about weight transfer. And... Some of you may be aware that there are two broad types of or styles of cross-country skiing, um, broadly classic and skate. Now, you might see the, uh, the impressions on the snow there on that lovely looking trail. Um, some of the tracks go in a sort of a straight ahead parallel kind of a direction. And some of those tracks are splaying outwards to the left and out to the right. You can see that skaters have been on there. Either way, with skating or cross country. Um, it's all about um, transferring your weight from one ski to the other and you're riding a ski forward or in the case of uh, skating out to the left and then out to the right, but largely forward. 
um, balancing your body weight, getting your center of gravity over one ski at a time. The ultimate objective in cross country skiing is in that riding of one ski, in that um, uh, thrusting forward, transferring your weight, is we want ult ultimately we want maximum glide, minimum effort. Um, because you need to cover often, you know, uh, I suppose. Uh, uh, distances over, over varying terrain. You don't, as I said, or don't always have gravity on your, on your side. You've got nice flat terrain, as you can see in that photo there. Um, but you've got undulating, um, you've got all sorts of stuff. And you want to be able to get the maximum uh, mileage with the minimum energy exerted. Now, um, those are some of the key differences, I suppose. Let's move on to the gear. Um, what you see there is uh, just a, a picture of um, a couple of uh, touring adapted, if you wish, uh, cross country skis um, for touring in the back country. And um, you might uh, have an impression of cross country skis as being more or less like this, straight, skinny, and classic skis and skate skis alike can both look roughly like this. That is, you know, pretty much no wasting or, or shape to them. Um, the main difference between classic and cross country skis is with classic, um, where you're essentially um, moving forward with the skis in a parallel pattern, uh, you generally have some kind of traction in the center of the base of the skis. And that helps to uh, give you some thrust forward as well as uh, you know, traction for climbing. Um, and that often tends to be, um, well, with most modern cross country skis in the form of what we call a pattern base. And we'll have a look at that in a moment or sometimes termed as a fish scale. These are in fact skate skis. Um, in fact, I was skating around on these this morning in the back country, would you believe? Generally, these are not the sort of skis you would use for back country. These are the sort of skis designed for, or, or traditional skinny uh, classic skis for the packed trails like that's that picture we looked at just before. Um, let's move on. This is a, an advance, if you wish, on um, the traditional classic straight and skinny, no metal edge kind of ski. This is an adaptation of classic skis that you would use for um, both on trail and to an extent off trail. You see there's a little bit more shape to them. They're a little bit wider. Um, the binding is also like these ones here, very lightweight. And we'll have a closer look at the bindings in a moment. Um, you have middle edges on these and a little bit more shape and width to help you for going not just on a packed groomed trail, but also off into the snow surrounds meandering in, in the trees, if you wish, a little bit of backcountry. The binding on these skis and these boots uses a system called Triple N, New Nordic Norm, um, modern type of, uh, of, um, of cross country ski binding and very, very lightweight, very robust, a variation on it known as Triple N B C, that is New Norm, Norm Backcountry. Um, just a little bit more robust in some ways, and we'll look at that closer in a moment. You might notice there that I've also got bigger baskets compared to these ones that you would generally just use on a groomed and packed trail. Um, bigger baskets for doing a little bit of uh, into, into the softer stuff. Taking that further, um, these skis also have pattern bases. They're starting to look a little bit more like uh, something you might use for alpine touring, except they also have, um, you know, the fish scale underneath for traction. Um, quite uh, easy for climbing. In fact, quite effective, surprisingly effective um, for climbing traction with the pattern bases that are built into these in the centre part. Um, with a more robust form of boot, getting away, away from these types of cross-country boots, which are more like a hiking boot in some ways and easy to walk around in. This is something that's getting a little bit closer to an alpine touring boot, um, plastic uh, shell, um, uh, padded linings, um, buckles on them, um, but still um, nowhere near as heavy as say an alpine boot 
and with a fair bit more flex in them. You'll see towards the front of the boots there, there's these bellows, um, which there's a fair bit of flex in for lifting your heel. Um, and uh, when, you, when you're touring or telemark skiing, and of course, telemark skiing is a form of Nordic skiing. Um, related to cross-country Nordic skiing, uh, originated in a region of, uh, of uh, Norway known as Telemark. And um, here we go. There's a closer look or just a comparative look, I guess, at the three skis that I've just highlighted. Um, gone from something that's a, more of a traditional skinny cross-country ski. As I said, that is, act, that is in fact a, a skate ski, that one, but however, very much similar looking to a classic ski, which would also have a pattern base underneath. No metal edge. Middle one, something that's adapted to a little bit more uh, backcountry, but still very lightweight using the triple NBC system. Um, and the bottom one being uh, something that's uh, got a fair bit more oomph in it, um, more suited to uh, um, touring off pist, um, steeper slopes, a um, bit of telemark skiing. Um, and while it's not going to give you the same sort of traction, of course, as having skins, um, there are the advantages, of course, of um, not having to take skins on and off every time you go over a, a little hill or an undulation. And there's a closer look at the boots there as well. Um, this shows the underneath of the boots and a bit of a closer look at the bindings. Um, we can see that the Triple N system and the Triple NBC both have um, a bar inset into the front of the boot and that basically just slots into the binding. There are also ridges that go down the binding and correspond with grooves in the bottom of the boot, creating a fairly robust attachment to the, uh, to the ski for the purposes of turning and the like. Um, and the closest one to us in the shot there, this is, um, some of you may have heard of cable bindings, and that is a, um, a binding where you've got the duck bill type uh, boot that you can see there that slots in at the front, um, and a cable that is adjustable that goes, loops right around the back of the boot. Um, that would be usable equally with this boot as well. However, this is a binding that's, um, I suppose, an adaptation or an advance on cable bindings. It's called 7TM. It's my, um, I suppose, my system of choice um, for a few reasons. I think it's a bit more robust than, uh, than your standard uh, cable binding. I also use it on, on the uh, on pist on the slopes as well um, when we do have lifts operating. Um, the, uh, the system also has a release mechanism, which is really good for doing a little bit of doing the telemark downhill as well. It provides a... Um, a higher degree of, I suppose, safety and security in case you uh, you get into uh, a bit of a, a stack that might endanger one of your uh, your, your your joints. Perhaps um, it's designed to actually pop out, similar to an alpine binding. Um, somewhat more expensive than a standard cable binding, though. Just moving on, another look at it. You can see the base of the boots there, and uh, and a front on look at those bindings as well. And look, uh, feel free to ask more questions. I mean, there's a million questions probably that could be asked about the, uh, the gear um, when we get to the uh, Q&A in a little while. Um, oh, and briefly, yes, sorry, I almost forgot. Uh, look at the bases as well. And there's the pattern base or the fish scale that I was referring to. A little hard to see on the middle ski there, but it is there. Um, you can see the base otherwise looks much like a you know, you would find on downhill skis or any, any other skis as well, except for that centre section, um, which is uh, on the far left version is a slightly different material. That's uh, basically a waxless ski material. Um, and you've got metal edges, as you can see, on the middle and the left versions. Um, and uh, that is for both giving you some traction for climbing, as well as a little bit of a, a push off as, as well. Um, Going on to just talking about backcountry touring. Now, I, I did mention, I did mention uh, that um, the objectives of cross or key objectives of cross country skiing are getting as much efficiency in our gliding and transfer of weight from one ski to the other as possible. Balance, you're essentially balancing on one ski at a time. Unless, of course, you've got gravity and or downhill slope 
um, to your advantage at any given time. Now, when we go on to cross country for or Nordic for the back country, I think that it's important to note that um, Nordic or backcountry touring versus say Alpine touring, rather than climbing up skins off, um, adrenaline down for a minute or so, climbing back up, etc., going to a, a destination, then it's up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, while of course there's opportunities for adrenaline and Nordic backcountry touring as well, it's more about enjoying the journey, I think from A to B to C to D. And um, if you're gonna be, if it's about enjoying the journey and, and soaking up the scenery or whatever, um, and you're going over terrain which is continually changing and undulating, then skins become impractical. Um, to the Nordic skier, I like to say sometimes that uh, to the Nordic skier, the time spent uh, um, faffing around with putting your skins on and getting them off again is time spent uh, that you could instead be skiing. Um, but hey, each to their own. I'm going to flick through um, a few photos here, um, as well, more than a few perhaps, but to give you a little bit of a more of a sense of um, what we get up to when we uh, head out behind uh, places such as this ski area boundary sign here at Hoth. And as you can see, look at the great expanses of open and uh, um, country there to get into. Now, while the Alpine tourer might look at that and go, oh yeah, look at that. That's Mount Locke, in fact, at, at the top. Look at those chutes down there. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like to get some adrenaline in some of those. The cross country or Nordic tourer might look at that and go, oh, look at the, just the views are incredible. And we, it's more about the touring along the ridges and uh, perhaps in some ways it might be more of a, I suppose there's more, perhaps there's some, it can be some more of a social element to it. Um, but uh, this is on the way out to one of our favourite places around here, and that is uh, heading out to the Mount Locke area, Derrick Hut over in the National Park. Um, this is in fact uh, on one of the ridges uh, down off the Razorback. Um, and this is like, yeah, our touring on the Razorback. Uh, while we might drop down here and there and leave a few turns like that on, um, you know, if you're into telemarking, it's about touring around the ridges and just soaking up the views. And there's an example as well. Um, that's in fact up around uh, top of Dargo Bowl area at Hotham. And you can see that uh, there's some lines drop down there. You might find that, um, you know, when you're out Nordic touring and you're on um, those, as I said, those fatter skis and uh, um, you start to do a little bit of the, the telemark turns, you know, the temptation whenever it arises is, you know, you, when it arises, you might just say drop a few turns, climb out again using your pattern base. No need to get skins on, then skins off. I think it provides a lot more versatility in many ways. Of course, it doesn't lend itself to perhaps so, so steep and deep necessarily all the time. Um, but here's some uh, just some nice views out over the Razorback from uh, when you're out and about touring. It's all about often uh, to a large degree. It's uh, it's all about the views and, as I said, about the journey as much as the adrenaline, if, if not more. Eagle Ridge, another favourite place at Hotham to go touring out on. And there's some nice gentle slopes down to the left there as well to drop a few turns, climb out and keep on touring. This is just some of the scenes around Hotham that you might see when you're out cross country, Nordic touring. And some of the uh, the wonders of nature you tend to find when you're uh, getting into Nordic touring that um, you probably accumulate lots of photos of uh, some of the beautiful natural features we uh, we get to see. Um, perhaps lots of pictures of trees as I do. Shout out to the YHA Cross Country Ski Club or Nordic Ski Club, which is um, a really great club in Victoria. In fact, um, if you're looking at getting into uh, into Nordic cross-country ski touring. Um, that is in fact largely um, the recreational touring um, you know, background I came from over the years. And um, there's a group of um, keen uh, tourers heading out uh, beyond Hotham to the Mount Locke area. And after being to Mount Locke, heading down the other side where there's just uh, enormous expanses of terrain and. As you can see, there's some lovely esters there from a few telemarkers heading down that gentle slope. 
and more of the great expanses on uh, you can enjoy touring around on Nordic uh, or cross country skis out the back again of the ridges near Mount Lock, out the back of Hotham. Out enjoying the the again the uh, the wonders of the scenery. Um, not so much necessarily, uh, uh, you know, dropping down gullies for adrenaline, but it's uh, enjoying the tour, enjoying the journey. And uh, one of our favourite places to go around here, Derek Derek Hut, in memory of Charles Derek. Um, and that's uh, out uh, on the borderline of uh, the Hotham um, Alpine Resort and the Alpine National Park. And, you know, um, I think Nordic cross-country touring um, lends itself quite well to the, you know, going and camping as well, you know. Uh, load yourself up with a backpack and uh, stay a night out there. This is a popular place as well, Derek Hut, for, for touring in, in quite a beautiful surrounds, as you can see. And uh, there's some more of us. Uh, it, it's incredibly versatile where you can go with Nordic or backcountry touring, you know. Um, that's another hut around Hotham, a historic hut known as Spargo's Hut. Some of the uh, YHA Nordic Ski Club crew. And here we are down in the forest. When you've got good snow cover down in the forest, it's not just about, you know, high up on the ridges. You can really get in amongst some amazing scenery. Huge open spaces. Um, few people might know about when a lot of people think about backcountry, they think about those ridges we were looking before and dropping down those steep gullies and the adrenaline, whatever. But in fact, um, it's just uh, amazing expanses out there with the right sort of snow. Say some of the uh, the plains out between Hotham and Dinner Plain, which is in fact where this picture is from. Um, there is a trail, a cross country trail. Um, which you can follow from Hotham to Dinner Plain, but even more fun is when you can get on to, uh, you know, touring or backcountry touring adapted Nordic skis and, and really just leave that trail and go zipping around amongst the, uh, the open plains and the trees and come across things like this old cattleman's hut, JB hut, open plains, as you can see in the background. And there's some more happy tourers out in the woods there. That's actually down around the dinner plane. Here's a here's another traditional a traditional um, you know groomed cross country Nordic ski trail. Um, you can also see those classic tracks, no um, specifically for um, classic style skiing where your skis stay in the groove only up to a certain width. Those fat ones uh, that I showed you before won't fit in that those, but you know. Those middle size or middle width skis that I was talking about, the triple NBC, the new Nordic Norm BC system, are really, really well suited to this sort of touring. We might do what I'd what I'd call half pissed touring. That is half on pissed on the on the groom trails. And then when it takes your fancy, you just nick off into that lovely untouched snow on the side. And the skis will uh, will handle that fairly well particularly in Australia where it doesn't tend to be too deep and powdery most of the time. And you can actually see three ladies right there on exactly that type of skis. Um, that's, um, you know, they're slightly adapted, uh, slightly fatter um, classic skis with the, um, with the triple NBC bindings, still very, very lightweight. But as you can see, um, we, I was with them, of course, and took this picture. We were zipping around on the trails and went, oh, that looks lovely in those woods down there and took off into the back country, as you can see from those tracks. Or when you're on the trail and you go, look at that lovely untouched snow and you just drop off the trail, do a few turns and then come back to the trail again. I think um, for people who are really, you know, starting to get into cross country skiing for the first time, and or backcountry, um, I think that uh, that triple NBC system is a really good kind of a balance between, you know, trade-offs between weight and uh, versatility, to, versatility to go off, off trail um, into the backcountry. Um, just briefly want to touch on cross, what I call cross-country crossover, um, and that is that um, I just wanted to point out that even if you didn't you know want to necessarily take up cross country skiing um, on its own, and you're into or have an interest in splitboarding or alpine touring. 
the techniques that you pick up in cross-country skiing will in fact help you with any of these other disciplines as well because those um the the ability to, to transfer your weight to get your weight forward your knee flexion to get your weight forward to thrust forward on one ski balancing on one ski maximum efficiency in your gliding is going to benefit you as well whether you are on alpine uh, tourers or on a split board um, so I think it's worth considering for anyone that's into backcountry pursuits to give cross-country skiing a go because it, even, even in some ways alpine skiing, I believe um, that learning Nordic skiing techniques, cross-country skiing techniques will assist you. Um, I think now it's about time that we throw to some Q&A if anyone actually has uh, anything to ask. Uh, thanks, thanks for listening. Um, over to you, Daniel. Thanks very much, Glenn. Uh, I'll just uh, stop your screen share so people can see us talking. That was uh, an excellent presentation. It sounds uh, significantly more relaxing than uh, the majority of my split board missions. Uh, we have quite a few uh, questions coming through here. Uh, and uh, I think one of, the, one of the big ones is from Jeremy. I suspect a couple of people are, uh, are wondering about this. And he asks whether you can telemark on NNBC, NNNBC bindings. Look, absolutely. As <laughs> ski, for, <laughs> ski for real, free the heel, as they say. Um, I don't know if any of you might have heard of that before. But uh, anyway, um, look, you can... If you've developed the skills, um, you can telemark on this or on this or anything in between. Frankly, it's a lot easier to learn to telemark on these, okay? But if you get good at it, you can go skinny as well. So, you look, you can telemark on anything. Um, I think just when you've got uh, a bit more weight in the system and with uh, boots like these, um, it's, it's easier to telemark and I'd certainly uh, suggest to anyone that wants to learn telemarking for the first time, you want to be looking at, um, if not, you know, obviously resort, there's resort telemark systems and NTN and all, I'm not going to get into all of that, but you want something that's probably a little bit more robust. As you progress, you might find that you're able to do it as well on skinnier, lighter gear, but it is, it is harder to do on lighter gear, but certainly you can do it. Excellent. Uh, Tim Brewster has asked uh, if he could get the name of the touring ski club you mentioned. And I, I reckon it might be a good idea if we extend this question to touring ski clubs in general, rather than just the one that you mentioned earlier. Sorry, was that a question? I, I missed the question part of it. Uh, names of touring ski clubs that are active in Victoria. Ah, so Nordic touring, cross country touring. Yes, look, I, I would, the, the primary one is the one that I mentioned earlier um, in Victoria, certainly, um, a really great uh, social bunch as well. Um, and there's people who are into all sorts of disciplines and across, you know, multiple dis disciplines within Nordic skiing. Um, I, I recommend the YHA Nordic Cross Country Ski Club. Um, whether you're into skating or trail touring or, you know, telemarking, there's people in there that are into all of those and usually more than one, such as myself. You know, I went uh, backcountry uh, uh, touring on, on these fellas over to Mount Locke and Derek Hart and beyond yesterday. And this morning, I also, uh, because the snow was really well settled and nice and firm, I went skating around essentially backcountry and amongst the trees on these this morning. Um, there are other clubs. Another one is Melbourne Nordic. Um, I'm not... I, I don't have uh, any uh, close affiliation with them, but I, they exist. So that's, and I know of people who um, do um, join Melbourne Nordic for uh, activities, for trips sometimes. So that's a couple to look at. Excellent. Uh, Tim was also curious about uh, Maps for Falls and Hotham backcountry touring. Uh, we might actually take that question uh, offline, Tim, if that's uh, convenient, because that's... Uh, that's probably a question that has a more involved answer. Uh, with probably links would be would be a better way of uh, would be a better way of dealing with that. I think so. We'll, we'll take that one offline for you. 
Uh, Nick asks, how flexible are the hiking boot style cross country boots and how much hiking can you do in them? These are great. These triple NBC, um, you can get Fisher, um, Alpine is just one. Um, those are probably the two biggest ones. Um, there are Rossi and other brands as well. But yeah, that's, that's the key connection with your, with your binding, that, that bar set in the front. And obviously your heel is free. You've got a fairly, as I said, those grooves there correspond with the ridges on your binding. Really lightweight. Um, you can go to the pub after you've been out skiing. Um, and these just look like normal hiking boots. They're no, no weightier than the standard lightweight hiking boot. So you can hike in them as you would in a normal hiking boot? Look, I wouldn't recommend going for, you know, hiking, hiking in these because you wouldn't want to say, you know, over time, if you are doing a lot of hiking around on stones and that, you might start to damage the shape of the sole, which is, you know, it's important to keep that in fairly good shape and intact. I mean, yes, to a degree, you know, they're fine for walking around and stuff, but I'd probably, if you want to go for proper hiking and whatever, want to get some hiking boots. Yeah. So uh, I think Nick was probably getting at access to uh, more distant terrain. You would take a uh, potentially a second set of boots or... I just, I just saw um, another, a question, I'm sorry, just a clarification on that pop-up. Um, yes, um, the Scott boots as well, which um, these actually, um, the excursion model, um, two buckles. Um, there are many uh, variations on, on these sorts of, you know, uh, uh, Nordic touring slash telemark boots, many with three buckles. And I, I find these are a great trade off, just two buckles, but there's a fair, fair bit of rigidity in them. The plastic shell, you can walk around in them pretty normally, unlike downhill ski boots or many alpine touring boots, you know. Yes, they're heavier and a bit more rigid than, than these fellas. But yeah, you could go to the pub in these as well. Excellent. Right. Well, we have more and more questions coming in, but unfortunately, we're uh, starting to run out of time. So we might call it here uh, and we'll swap to uh, the intermission. Uh, join us back at uh, one fifty for Peter Campbell's presentation on ski touring and bush uh, search and rescue. Uh, in the meantime, we'll swap to trans, uh, intermission and Glenn might uh, answer a couple of the Q&As uh, via text in the meantime as well. Happy to. Thank you very much, Glenn. Thanks very much. <laughs>